Cease of the team. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another chart talk. It's November 2nd. Uh, the Fed just raised interest rates once again. The market took another pummeling. Uh, we'll get into the market recap in a bit. But Ben, I hear you got a little Halloween story for me real quick. Uh, so I had, again, it's, I guess the first year in the house when there's trick-or-treaters coming around. And I was not properly prepared for the trick-or-treaters. So these group of kids come up. Again, they were pretty old. They pulled up in cars, which was, I don't know if you ever went trick-or-treating when you had a driver's license. That's but, crazy. That's yeah, crazy. I was like a little old. For that that ruins, ruins the whole thing. But yeah. These kids, you know, pull up, you know, eight kids, they come out and I have like no candy. I have like <laughs> chips, a whole, like getting like the most random treats possible, like bags of chips, like a Twix bar. I had like a half <laughs> eaten Entenmann's thing. I'm like, just take the whole thing. Lay's, like, Lay's potato chips. They're like ready to give it back. Like, yeah. Like uh, barbecue, chip, like, what, you know, so whatever. So they, they take their, they're all happy. They take their stuff. They leave. And like 30 minutes later, they hear a knock again. So I'm like, all right, next group of trick-or-treaters. So the kids come back a second time. And I'm like, fuck, I got, I come out, I'm like, guys, I'm sorry. Like, you guys cleared me out. Like I'm making food inside. Like, I don't know what you guys want. And they're like, you ever see those videos when the, the I see like those TikToks where they're like, they knock on the door. Like, what do you do for a living? Like what, you know, can we see your home or like what kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're like, what do you do for a living? I'm like, Oh, I run my own business it's called trading experts. And we get like a little dialogue about it, but there was one kid who was like the main guy, like who had the balls to kind of like ask the question for everyone else was just like kind of hid, hid behind him. Like just listening. So I'm like, guys, I have no more candy, but if you guys like to read, <laughs> I got a couple of books. Oh, so oh, like, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. No. So I, come oh. Back, I come back up here and grab oh. a couple of the books and then I grab one of the watches and I bring them down the books. They each get a book and then I give the one kid who had the balls to ask the questions. I give him my like, like, you get to get, like, take this. And they all like lose their shit. They're like, oh, damn. Oh, like all oh, like you know, and he's like oh my god the name's on it ever so again i might have botched the first trick-or-treaters with the bags of chips and my one twix bar but then the yeah. one kid left with a you know a watch where he was definitely <laughs> yeah, like we're going back to that house next year <laughs> they're giving yeah. out they're giving out watches yeah what book so, you give them i get our books i had a bunch oh. that's, why there's, that's why, <laughs> why there's none here the worst the worst Halloween ever. Literally, oh. yeah. Last video, there was like nine of them here. So I took, I literally ran up and I just, you know, there was like eight or nine kits. I grabbed, you know, enough for each of them to get a book. And then the last kid got, you know, the watch. And he was like, they all were, because it took them like, I guess, a few seconds to realize it wasn't a Samariner. But again, you trick or treat, you're expecting to get, you know, a bag of Skittles. And I'm like, yo, here. <laughs> funny. <laughs> That's funny. That's a, the worst Halloween house <laughs> I've ever heard. I don't care about the watch. Give me books. <laughs> Yeah, so that was my my Halloween story. But uh, no, no trick or treaters by you, dude. So I got all this candy, thinking like this is my year. I'm gonna have like a big, uh, a big you know showing. Mm -hmm. Not, uh, I got one trick or treater. So now I just have fucking piles of candy in my house. <laughs> I'm trying to go on like a diet. And I'm just finding myself like midnight, like fucking just you know like fucking Reese's Twix, Kit Kat. <laughs> I wake up like man, I'm such a tummy ache. I don't know why. <laughs> hey, fucking <nice>. kids <laughs> they probably heard i was friends with the guy giving out books and they just didn't show up <laughs> yeah so anyways that was that was my little halloween thing um so again shaking i know you killed it with the recap pre-fed announcement i know we had some members who may have may have plagiarized your research a little bit but i know a oh. lot of members were very appreciative of your breakdown you want to give maybe like that one one or two minute synopsis of what yeah for the, sure i'll give uh let me share my screen i'll share the Discord chat. That? Yeah, so here's the breakdown of what we were expecting. You know, um, we we looked at all this stuff and we were saying it's all about the press conference because we pretty much knew a 75 basis point hike was coming. Uh, it's just whether the language was going to be dovish or whether it was going to be hawkish. And we got uh, a letter, a message out of BlackRock this week, and and like you know, like uh, Fed member, like all the Fed members and stuff, they worked in big finance companies like BlackRock or, you know, like the big consulting firms like McKinsey. So, mm -hmm. you know, them helping their buddies out and giving them a little like tidbit of what's to come. Like you can take that advice seriously, usually. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, that's not, that wasn't the case. They said it to expect dovish language and Powell came out and gave, gave anything but dovish language. He said, there's no reason to stop the hikes. He said, even if we pause the hikes for a little bit, 
Um, that doesn't mean the, the terminal rate, we're at the terminal rate 5%. It could go higher. You know, what they showed today is they have to see inflation come down. They have to see wages come down. We need to see some bad economic data. And we're still seeing great economic data. You know, mm-hmm. we just got a, a Jolt's jobs report Tuesday or whatever it was yesterday. And it just showed that, you know, the labor market's still very strong. And that's keeping wages high, which keeps people spending money, which keeps inflation high. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we got the 75 BPS and then we got the sell off. Um, and, you know, we were prepared for it. So uh, I, I think, you know, it, it, it's it's tough to it's tough to be bullish after that, honestly, for me. Mm-hmm. Like it's I'll, uh, let's share the screen to the spy. Um, and I thought it was really interesting that. Uh, I thought it was very interesting. So now we got the spy. Here's today. We kind of opened up, and uh, you know, the first initial reaction was a move higher, and then when Powell started talking and gave us the uh, kind of hawkish message, that's when we sold off. I thought it was very interesting that you know, from these August highs right here mm-hmm. down to these October lows, it was like to the penny where we opened yesterday was a fifty percent retracement. That's that's pretty re- uh, remarkable to see. So I mean. After the reaction we got to Fed today, it's tough for me to be bullish in the short term. I think, um, you know, we'll still see a ton of volatility. But, you know, what what he said was my fear for the market was, you know, it's we haven't seen any of the progress that needs to be made. We can't make he, he didn't make a call in December because he's like, I just need to see some be- better data. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a grim outlook for a little bit. Um, that's that's really I got on. it. I mean, yeah. it seems that the, the old saying of buy the rumor, sell the news continues to be true. Right, exactly. Yeah, and that's it. It's like I'm very surprised that BlackRock came out with the the note saying, you know, expect this dovish language, and then we didn't get it because it's like usually those guys, you know, or did they get short and just you know, well, yeah, yeah. Say, it's like <laughs> yeah. if you know the bad news, it's like you're not gonna be like, yo, it's gonna be, it's like, oh guys, it's gonna be great, yeah, like, yo, buy it up, yeah. It's like the CND when it's like markets of turmoil. It's like that's the best time to buy. Like they're telling yeah. you sell, and then when they, I don't, they have like the. The the odd lot indicator of the opposite end of it when like everything's rosy and they say buy everything. I don't know if they have like a segment for that, but um anyways. Yeah. But you no, know, the day before COVID, uh COVID or some when COVID shit, Kramer was like, I see no reason to ever sell a stock again. Mm. <laughs> and it was like boom, 30% drop in like yeah. two weeks. <laughs> um, all right. So I mean, that's all I got for the market outlook. I mean, it looks like we're gonna be range bound. You know, it, it looks after this reaction. You know, it's tough to expect us to break this 390 spy, but you know, what do we say? Uh, every day after the Fed is a notable reversal day. You know, we've mm-hmm. seen that pretty much every time this year. They've been, it's been more upside and then downside, but you know, it could happen to happen backwards. You know, market has a mind of its own sometimes, mm-hmm. but uh, just from a macroeconomic standpoint, everything he said, he said th- statements like our window for a soft landing regarding a recession is narrowing. It's like, I don't know how you spin that to be good news. It's like, mm-hmm. it looks like uh, a, sh- uh, a tough recession is coming regardless of of what what how much I raise rates. So, you know, t- tough for me to be bullish in the short run. However, we are getting a ton of great action in the earnings names, you know, um, maybe not the mega cap Amazon and things like that. Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Apple, those guys are pretty smoked. But looking under the hood, there's a lot of positive action in the, in the healthcare space, the biotech space. So we've had some great trading the last few weeks. You know, I, I think uh, if we're going to be chop around, I think the best in breed names can still, you know, I'll still be looking to buy stocks, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe not tomorrow, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not, it doesn't mean like I'm hands off anything long for the rest of the year. It's like, no, I'm going to keep hunting the relative strength and we're ready for a bounce. Those names are going to explode because we saw great action. Anything that says pharmaceuticals in the company mm-hmm. is like, uh, when they said uh, it's a Bitcoin stock. Remember in the beginning, it's like, <laughs> oh, we're a crypto stock now. Like mm-hmm. therapeutic, anything with therapeutics or pharmaceuticals, it's like ripping. That's, a no. well, that's yeah. positive to say. Those names are very fun to trade. They really break out with some voracity. Um, where are we going from here? That's really all I got on that. Um, I mean, I'll do, I, I can do a little quick. Oh, you got one? All right. Sorry. Two on, again, you were talking about pharma names. Well, let's see. My Humana is more, a little more healthcare, but um, you know, does not care about this sell off still, right. you know, again, just been trailing a stop every day, you know, talking about these names again, like you said, like there's still some setups out there where again, market's getting kind of beat up today, but this Humana just has not cared. And last three days, again, this 549 stop 
you know, just looking for those best charts. Again, that targets kind of that the strength in that name compared to uh, the market today is very mm -hmm. remarkable. Like that, like, holding that green. Oh, that's not good. Even though, that, I mean, I'm saying like, you know about what <laughs> that's I'm not saying? good. This is like, the, what I'm saying, like for Humana, it's like the healthcare sector is ran into this major line of resistance. This is like this profit taking area that we've been trying to highlight. And Humana is in that space and Humana just like, I don't care. But this is one of those things when you do buy the strongest stocks, you can sometimes get bailed out a little bit longer. I would honestly, if we sell tomorrow, I would expect this name to still break this low a day and reverse back lower. I, I wouldn't expect the markets continue selling pressure tomorrow, the healthcare sector in general pulling back tomorrow, and this thing continue to break out higher. That would be a pretty extreme anomaly. But again, when you do buy these stronger stocks, you can kind of get a little bit bailed out when things aren't going so well. But some of the other sectors, again, you already spoke about the SPY in detail. It does kind of remind me like this little bounce we had back in June. We had a little mini bounce and then we kind of reverse and put in new lows. And I know you kind of mentioned a couple of times where you don't think like the bottom is in, in the SPY where maybe this is the time where we do push again into new lows. Um, but again, just a couple other little sectors. Again, we talked about the energy sector being very strong lately working its way to that retest, but that's where we want to take some profits. And it seems like for now, this is kind of going to, you know, this probably will be the short term high for now. We saw this with the Dow, Dow 30, again, some crazy moves out of some of these. Right. Like that's a sick move. It made off lows into mm -hmm. that area. Yeah. And this is, this is where, again, it's like the whole year we've been saying, like you have to sell the pretty, but when it looks the prettiest is when you don't want to. And that was even like kind of with one of the members yesterday on the flip side with Amazon, it looked horrible. And it was more of a long-term position. He wanted to then sell. And it's like, I don't know if it's a long-term. Well, no, yeah. M M1's a different ballgame. Yeah, yeah, It was just like, those just examples. Like, the, you know, this broadly, it's like the Dow 30 has gone on this dramatic run into this very clear downtrend. This is where we want to take profits. And it's just coincidental that the Fed is that reason that's going to make this probably the short-term top. And it's going to yeah. have to kind of fill in this range. And we saw that with healthcare. Again, why my stop is so tight in humanity because this is a very clear sign that healthcare is probably going to pull back in and, the stock of holdings in that sector. So I'm not going to try to give that name room. I want to keep it tight. And if it's going to roll over lower tomorrow, then I can take as much as I can from that as soon as possible. And then again, these are just some notes where from our like weekly newsletters where we try to give examples. So for going into this week for consumer staples, going into the week, the market was very strong. We expected, you know, the market to trade higher, but we don't want to just have, we don't want to say just blindly buy anything. And, and the consumer staple sector was a great example where, this buy up through this base was the technical spot. It up five or six days randomly into the middle of this range. You don't want to chase it here. And as we see today, this is a perfect example of why we don't want to just blindly chase things when everything looks, you know, perfect out there. Um, so that's really, you know, my little broad market out. I have, I have a little bit of good news for you. Type up the spy mm -hmm. and then uh, click a monthly chart. Uh, zoom out. And then, you know, get everything. What's that look like? Let's zoom, if you zoom way out. We look at this base right slowly. here. Slowly. That's going to be a bull flag. Slowly. Slowly but surely. Oh, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, slowly but surely. That's a bull flag. Uh, I don't know when it'll matriculate higher, but, you know, the second we see it take out one of those pivots mm -hmm. uh, where you have that red line, resistance, profit-taking area, mm -hmm. um, you know, that could be the signal we're looking for for a bottom. Yeah. I mean, I think the one thing here is like we've even seen with a lot of individual names this year where they've broken down for the first half of the year and then they based out for the second half of the year. And and most are still in that that base. I think the same thing with the spy. It's like we've basically broken down for this entire year. We'll probably need to base that, you know, maybe a similar length and then that work back to highs and then that's a massive flag. And then that sets yeah. you up for that move to 700. But, you know, whatever it is, five or six years from now. But that, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we completely don't with that. Um, but yeah, so again, that was for Mark Outlook. Again, top ideas. We went over Humana. Anything stock wise on my end, I think for the next couple of days in the end of the week, really just letting the market flush itself out. But like you said, there has been definitely a lot of good ideas. We've even started to put some alerts out from member ideas. You know, a lot of Cush's names have been working lately. So you'll start to see more of those post earning setups that are that are out there. But I think we have to just give the market a day or two to kind of take in this news and then kind of get back into this. Yeah, see where it gets from there. So, Shake, since you always have the questions, I'm going to now give you one. Oh, yeah. All right. So. I saw this. 
Yeah. So this is, uh, I will, I will start the treasury bonds are not my uh, area of expertise. No, I know. Well, okay. So <laughs> that we know, but I will try to simplify. Uh, so again, there's always a new hot investment. Six months ago is NFTs, crypto, wheat stocks, whatever it is right now. It's yep. these I bonds that have these fixed rates that were as high as, again, I, I'm not going to pay for market watch. So we're going to see this ad. It was as high as 9%. Again, as now the rate is down at 7%. You can put- I didn't up, see that. It was high as 9.62%. That's fucking pretty sick. Yeah. Um, so again, now you can lock it in for about 7%. You can invest, I believe it's up to $10,000. You lock it up for a year. So for you- Oh, you, it's a max $10,000? It's max 10. And then I there's like a loophole where you could put like another five in. Or, so it's like 15,000. But let's just keep it with a $10,000 example. Okay. If you had- You want to make 700 bucks? Yeah, so would you would you lock up your money for a year in this I bond, or would you invest it elsewhere? And if you were, where would you put it? Well, here's the thing: is that I probably would because ten thousand dollars out of my whole if it was my my whole bankroll was ten thousand dollars, then I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But to put, I mean, you know, to put some something that's a it'd be a very say small it, say, portion. Say, it, say it's your only bankroll. You got ten grand. Okay, okay, okay. That's fair. Then no, then no. I'm going to be looking for alpha. I'm going to be trading and looking for alpha. But if I have a hundred k and that 10K is, you know, 10% is guaranteed 7%. That's not a terrible investment. Mm -hmm. I mean, inflation's what? On the dollar, dollars up 15% this year. So actually, actually you're losing money. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, if if it was my only 10K, no, I wouldn't. Uh, I'm, I'm an aggressive trader. So I think I would do a lot better than 7% in a year, mm -hmm. personally. Uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts? I definitely this wouldn't. more you than me. No, I, def I definitely wouldn't. Um, I, the only reason why, again, any of these I bonds, anything with bonds related, it's more for someone who is way older and needs to preserve the money. Where mm. someone in, in your and in our age group, even in your 40s and 50s, you can you're still looking for maybe not alpha, but some appreciation. Where here you're capped, like your best case is 6.89 percent. And when things get really wacky, like we saw, you know, during the pandemic on the fixed income side, bonds are supposed to be the safe haven, and they got destroyed. You know, almost you know some of them those bonds got whacked worse than the market did. So I personally wouldn't, if it, I knew nothing <clears> about the market, I would just buy the spy. If it was like an individual name, Amazon being smoked right now, I'd be like, okay, a thousand bucks into Amazon. I think I'll be up more than 7% in a year. And if I wanted to kind of match that return more guaranteed, but more conservative, I'd buy a stock like Verizon that's currently paying a 7% dividend yield. So if I held that Verizon for the next year, I'll make 7%. And I have the ability to have some appreciation if from now until a year from now, Verizon stock appreciates, which this year Verizon's gotten destroyed. That's why that yield is so high. Usually Verizon yields like four to 5%. Now it's so how about, high. How about CQP? I think CQP's uh, yield is like nine, 10, 11, 12% or something like that. My buddy was telling me. So the, that's a nice chart, you know? The tricky part when you get into, even for Verizon, when you start to get above 5% on dividend yields, when the stock goes like on its X date, the stock gets smoked. So for example, again, it looks like they're doing monthly. Well, of course, because you know it's they're they're paying out the investors. It's literally oh, money coming out of the stock to pay yeah. investors. But what I'm what I'm saying is like when a stock's yielding say four percent and it's one percent a quarter, the stock is in a gap down one percent and it can kind of fill that hole up every day. And if you go if you look back more like pre-09 at the REIT space, you had AGNC paying out 30% a year, like the most insane dividend yield possible. But you had this, the stock was 30% of the value was getting sucked out of the stock every year. So the stock was just like on this, like almost like perpetual downtrend because it couldn't fill up those like 5% gap down days where a name like Apple that's yielding a percent, you know, percent or percent a quarter, depending on where it priced at. It's not like most people won't even know the stock went X dividend because it's in a gap down, you know, a quarter of a percent. Um, so I would pick Verizon over CQP, not because the dividend yield is lower, but just that Verizon's never really in the space of cutting it where CQP in the energy space, like the REIT space can be more market like performance related to the energy sector that they might be cutting or raising base, you know, energy prices are going up. They could be raising it, but if energy prices are to come down, they also can cut it. And the REITs have done that where now the REITs don't pay these crazy dividends because they all kind of got soaked during the financial crisis yeah, where that's where like people try to chase yield and it can often kind of get you in a, in a tricky spot. So like stock wise for that yield, I would avoid it just cause it's so high. Um, but again, that's what, you know, chart wise, it still looks great. So if you can trade it 
and still capture the dividend yield, then it's, it's kind of a win-win. But that was my question. I um, like it. I know you had you were going into some of the the you know some of the Amazon to Facebooks. You got to create there. the free account at some point. I know. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess yeah, I guess I should do that. Um, but was there anything earnings wise you saw from some of the bigger names? I know you mentioned they were like pausing on hiring. Did yeah. I, uh, so I mean, a Meta, Facebook. I mean, they just had crazy spending into a into an economic contraction. Whether we're going to recession or not, you shouldn't be spending ten billion on the metaverse. Mm -hmm. You know that that's why they're like. It was just a really gross mismanagement of company funds. Uh, and I think I saw a stat of they've been buying so much stock back mm -hmm. at an average price of 300. It said it's going to be one of the biggest wealth des destroyers in like market history, like losing mm -hmm. like billions and billions of dollars. So that was a problem. Um, Meta, Amazon had similar issues where, uh, yo, <laughs> Bezos, like Bezos saw where things were going like how much they were spending on warehousing and things like that is similar where they were kind of overspending mm -hmm. into a contractionary environment. And then Bezos got out of there and Andy Jassy came in. Andy Jassy's like a cloud guy. Like he's like a tech, he's not like a, you know, infrastructure kind of guy. So he got left with the bag, like fumbling. The bag was being fumbled and he kind of got, and he still hasn't kind of figured it out yet. Mm -hmm. So kind of same thing where it's like, you know, mismanagement of funds. Uh, I, I'm not really sure. Google, I think, is just like recessionary fears and advertisement spending and things like that. But you know, it's tough to uh, it's tough to think these stocks are going to you know be profitable investments from here or a year from now in this mm -hmm. name. If we look at it, it's like you know uh, on a daily chart, it's very simple. These names are on earnings, taking out 52 week lows. It's not attractive to me. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter which way you spin it, I think it's really positive that these things got dusted and the market didn't care so much. You know, I think that's really great. I think there's it's a lot better under the hood than uh, than people would lead you to believe. If you type up a name like Goldman Sachs, since their earnings, mm -hmm. you know, uh, go to daily chart. Uh, their earnings are that pivot low from a few weeks ago. And it's like, look what they've done. You know, that, that's a that's a huge company. That's a great mm -hmm. reaction. So, you know, there's a lot of that. Finance. We keep talking about healthcare stocks in industrial, uh, not industrial names like uh, names like Walmart. I've been in. I checked my long term account. I just keep wide stops on some of the names. Like I've been in this Kellogg for a year, and it's it's been K L K K K K. Uh, no, 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 just K one K. Okay. Yeah. And you know, look at that daily. It's great. I just put a wide stop below uh, like sixty five. Um. You know, back in May or so, it had those sick earnings, and it's a great looking chart now. Yeah, it looks phenomenal. And those are the type of names where it's not like it's not going to be the sexy name. Uh, I see Wing, Wing. Look at Wing. Go look at Wing Stop. I I just see it on your on your uh, watch list right there. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't a sexy name at all, but that's a nice gap up on earnings. Sold off today with the rest of the market, but you know that flags out for a bit. That looked phenomenal through highs. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, a lot of good little. No, there's a lot of good things under the hood of names you probably wouldn't expect. Uh, I heard someone on CNBC saying they actually had a really good point. I think it was Josh Brown. He's saying um, you uh, companies that do well in recessionary environments are still going to be great. Like insurance companies, they're going to be great. That was his example. I was like, you know what? That's a pretty good point. There's still going to be things that are you know doing well and making money. It might not be the big tech names, the sexy names. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, I don't plan on trading Amazon, uh, Netflix, Google, Meta. I don't plan on trading these things for you know. There's for the way I trade. I have very short term trading focus mm -hmm. no reason for me to look to buy these names yeah yeah to age over into new lows is right exactly it's just you know it's like you could say there's gonna be no soft landing in these these things right right it's gonna be pretty hard right those last four months of death yeah seven months of death all right shake is there anything else you want to go over i think we touched on a decent amount of points. uh yeah there's a few uh, uh a few charts you're looking at yeah you just have on yours Mm -hmm. uh, I really like this R rider systems. I don't know what they did today. Oops, hold on. Uh, so it's in the transport sector. If you look at that really nice flag, really, really nice macro resistance level up top, I think it's 85 or so. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the reaction it had to earnings, very, 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 very great reaction. So yeah, so through that area, uh, that one looks really good to me. Uh, another one is this uh, ACET that has earnings in a few days. It's just one of these biotechs, you know. Um, 
Monthly is terrible, but these are again short term trading vehicles. This needs a daily chart. And you know, this is just a major flag. Really nice wedge. So throughout 70, 1750 area, 18 bucks. Looks really good. We'll see what these earnings hold. And then uh so that's pretty good. And then our buddy Sarepta just had earnings. It looks like they're debt SRPT. They're down at 110 after hours. Oh, I uh, S S R P T, sorry. S S S. Oh my god, I'm cracking up. Here we go. <laughs> so really nice flag. They're down trading at 110 after hours. I didn't even see if they beat or not. Let's see. Let me let me let me uh but you know, they would have would have gapped up. I mean, everyone see that chart. This is on top and bottom line in Q3 as net loss more than quadruples. Is that a good headline? <laughs> <laughs> so this is sound... on top and bottom line in Q3 as net loss more than quadruples. Okay, so I'm probably taking that off the list. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think we're buying 120 anytime soon. Don't need a lot of macro analysis to tell you that's not good. <laughs> like our earnings sucked. You're like, yeah, yeah, quadruples. Yeah, I mean, that's all I got. Um, Going to be a, an interesting, uh, interesting trading at the year end. I'm hoping these biotechs can stay strong. Our next pivot, I think the market will be great. But um, that's really it. You know, we saw we keep seeing this pattern where the VIX goes to the to the 30s, then we see some sort of sell off, then it goes to low 20s, and you know that's when the market pivots. And it's just been very consistent all year. It's like keep an eye on that. Um, but that's that's really all I got. You got anything else for the kids? That's it, man. I think we I think we did good. All right. All right. Until next time, folks, that's all we got for you. Have a good week.